everyone, welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to today's daily quiz session. And before beginning, a gentle reminder regarding the Google form that we have attached to the description box of this video. This could be a big step towards qualifying the UPSC Civil Services exam in one shot. Why? Because if you choose to fill up the form and share your details with us, we will then quickly get back to you and arrange a one-on-one -on -one counselling session for you from our experts who will do all the hands holding for you. All problems, all queries and doubts regarding the upcoming exam. So do take the big step today. And now coming to today's questions. The first question on the screen is related to economy. Why has the question been taken up? Because of an article in the Economic Times of today which says India has launched UPI rupee card services in Sri Lanka and Mauritius. Now this could mean volumes for enabling financial integration between India and its neighboring countries. It could also mean a better flow of tourists between the nations because for travelers this could mean a lot of ease with regards to their financial transactions. Besides that, it also means creating a global network of digital connectivity. And hence in this light, the question here talks about, consider the following statements. The first one says, the National Payments Corporation of India, the NPCI, that is at the heart of all the dialogue related to your UPI, related to the rupee, related to the BHIM interface. And now the statement says NPCI is an initiative that was taken by the Reserve Bank of India, the Central Bank of India and the Indian Bankers Association with the purpose of providing retail payments and settlement systems in India. This is a valid statement. Indeed, it was created through a joint initiative of the RBI and IBA. Let's look at the second statement. Second statement says the NFS or the National Financial Switch is the largest network of shared ATMs which are expanded to automatic or automated telling machines in India and it is run by the NPCI. This is also a correct statement. Now let's remember that NFS or the National Financial Switch in fact is one of the largest such network which links and connects all the ATMs together in the country. It creates a consolidated transactional interface for all these ATMs. And let's also remember that this was created by the Institute for Development and Research in Banking Technology. And this was done back in 2004. However, in later in 2009, it was taken over by the NCPI under its control. And this itself is a Hyderabad based institute which was initially the creator of NFS and later it was taken by the NCPI which monitors it today. So both the statements here are valid making C as your correct answer. Now let's proceed with the second question on the screen. The second question is talking with reference to UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Why this question though? Because of a release in the Hindu pertaining to ecology, GS Paper 3, which says Odisha has recently declared Gupteshwar in the Koraput district of the state as its fourth biodiversity heritage site. The reason is that multiple, about more than 600 varieties of animal species and plant species have been found in the region, giving it the status of a biodiversity heritage. And on that note, the question, it says, group of monuments in Patadakal which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, were built by which of the following dynasties? A. The Cholas B. The Rashtrakutas C. 
Chalukyas or the Pallavas. Now, before we actually select the right answer, let's remember that this monument or this set of monuments rather, the Patta Dakkal, they are also referred to as Raktapa, Raktapura, more commonly. Now, this refers to the 7th and 8th century complex of Hindu and Jain temples. These are many, many temple complexes housed together. Intricate architecture. Which are situated in Northern Karnataka. It is a site of extreme cultural relevance because it is barely a few kilometers away from the Badami and barely a few kilometers away from the Aiholi. So which means we are talking about the Chalukyan architecture here and no doubt that the Patadakal is associated with the richness of Chalukyan architecture and monument art. Now on that note let's also remember that this beautiful mon monument is situated geographically in the west bank of the Malaprabha River. And now proceeding with the next question for the day. Here we are talking about once again two very very popular wetlands. The statements are one the Kanvartal or the Kabartal as it's known as. Tal means lake in Hindi. It is a wetland that is situated in Uttar Pradesh and it is Asia's largest freshwater oxbow lake. This statement is partially correct because yes, the Kanvartal or the Kabartal is Asia's largest freshwater oxbow lake. But what is this oxbow lake? Now, you might have studied in your geography when you were probably covering the chapter on different stages of river or the different courses of river right from when it begins during the mountainous terrain part, when it is very new and it's very, very fast, it creates waterfalls. That's the young stage of the river, the youthful stage. And then eventually it enters into a plain surface, right? And here the river enters its mature phase. Now remember, the mature phase of river is associated with certain kinds of water bodies. It is associated with certain kind of developments. One of this is the Oxbow Lake because Oxbow Lake can also be known as the U-shaped lake. Why? Because in the mature phase as the river starts flowing more slowly, it is also dealing with a lot of sedimentation in its path. There are a lot of sediments, a lot of soils like, you know, there is an alluvium mixture, there is a lot of uh, fertile uh, granulation there. Because of this what happens, the speed of the river also slows down and then it starts meandering. Once the river starts meandering, sometimes what happens, these meanders lead to creating lakes that are U-shaped. And eventually, after a while, the lake is cut off from the main riverbed. And it's left behind like a bracket-shaped or a U-shaped lake known as the Oxbow Lake. So the first statement is semi-correct. But this is not situated in UP. In fact, it is situated in Bihar. So that's why the first statement is overall wrong. Talking about the second statement, it says the... Ansupa Lake is a horseshoe shaped freshwater oxbow lake. So once again, we are talking about a U or a horseshoe shaped kind of river development that creates the lake. And this lake, the Ansupa Lake is situated on the left bank of Godavari River. Indeed, Ansupa is also a freshwater oxbow lake, but it is not on the Godavari bank. In fact, it is associated with River Mahanadi. It is barely 40 kilometers away. This lake is barely 40 kilometers away from Katak. And now you know that it is not situated in Godavari Bank. But when we say Katak and Mahanadi, yes, we are talking about Odisha. That's where the lake is situated. A very popular religious come cultural site which is attracting eco as well as religious tourism in huge numbers, rich in biodiversity. So second statement also not correct. And D is your right answer. None of the above are valid. Why was this picked up today? It was picked up because of a PIB release which said that the Niti Aayog has launched Greening India's Wetlands with Agroforestry. A beautiful, eco-friendly initiative which is abbreviated as the GROW project. There is also a portal to make the list of 
to collect all the data regarding important wetlands in the country. And with this, we proceed with our fourth question. It says, consider the following statements here. One, Sangeet Natak Academy Award is the highest Indian recognition given to people in the field of performing arts, dance, theatre. Correct statement. Indeed, this is the highest honour that can be given in the field of performing arts in India. Second statement, Mohini Attam and Satriya are famous classical dance, from, dance forms from the state of Kerala. Well, apart from Kathakali, that's a very popular classical dance of Kerala. The other very popular classical dance is Mohini Attam. This is correct. But when we talk about Satriya, now let's remember we are referring to a completely different state altogether. Because talking about Satriya, we need to remember that Satriya was introduced back in the 15th century AD, in the state of Assam actually. Why? It was introduced by Sri Mahapurush Sankara Deva. He was a great saint, a great reformer of the state who introduced this dance form. It's unique because it is also a manifestation of Vaishnava traditions in the state. And hence, the second statement is invalid because Satriya is not from Kerala. So only one statement here will be valid, making A your right answer. The reason why we have analysed this piece of news from Art and Culture is again a PIB release which said that the former Vice President, Sri M. Vankaya Naidu and Union Minister G.K. Reddy, Sri G.K. Reddy, they have inaugurated another regional centre of the Sangeet Natak Academy in Hyderabad. It is referred to as the South India Sanskritic Kendra or the Dakshin Bharat Sanskritic Kendra. Sanskritic here representing culture. And now to the PYQ of the day that is coming to you all the way from 2016. The PYQ says Project Loon, which probably was very popular back then and even today. It is important to know why was it in the news in fact. A. Was it about waste management technology? B. Was it about a wireless communication technology or C. Was it a solar power production technique? D. Was it a water conservation technology? Here the correct answer is B because when we speak about Project Loon, let's remember we are referring to an initiative that was a subsidiary of Google. What was the purpose? The purpose was to create wireless connectivity to provide internet connectivity in various remote areas of the world. How was this to be done? It was done with the help of helium filled balloons which could rise up in the air very quickly. The idea was to launch series of helium filled balloons which would fly up and go to the stratosphere which you might be aware from your geography is the second layer as we go upwards from the Earth's surface. So now here in the stratosphere, which also houses in its upper region the ozone layer that prevents us from UV radiation of the sun, it was in this part of the atmosphere that these helium balloons would capture aerial wireless network. Which would then be utilized for disseminating internet connection in various unconnected or rather disconnected locations of the world, making B your valid answer. With this, now let's see a very delightful piece of fact. It is the fact of the day and we are talking about the olive ridley turtles. Why have we picked up this fact for you today? The reason is that for the last one week, we have been hearing constantly in the news that olive ridley turtles, huge number of them, have been found washed up in the coastal regions in Odisha. The carcasses or the dead bodies of these little turtles have been just spanning across the beaches and initially it was a matter of intrigue and later it was realized that this could be because of overfishing in the lakes and rivers. It could be a product of over-tourism. So, the government has asked the fishermen as well as the local inhabitants to take utmost precaution and make sure that this 
is reduced because olive ridley already is a vulnerable species, let's remember. So what are these olive ridley turtles that we constantly hear about in the news? Why are they such a matter of intrigue to us? Well, the real matter of intrigue is the color of the shell. Now remember that most often a lot of people get confused between the Kemp ridley turtle and the olive ridley turtle. The most distinctive feature of olive ridley turtle is the fact that when they are babies, when they are very, very young hatchlings, they have a dark color. Eventually, as they grow up, the color becomes light and then it assumes a very beautiful, unique shade of olive green. That's why the name Olive Ridley Turtle. So they are one of the smallest sea turtles known across the globe. In fact, it is believed they are the second tiniest species or genre of turtles. They are found in many, many warm waters of the world. For example, in the Pacific Ocean, you'll find them all over the Indian Ocean as well as Atlantic Ocean. Talking about India, in India, these are the smallest variety of turtles that we have. Not only are they found in coastal areas of Gujarat, they are found in the Andaman Nicobar Island in the coastal regions of Bengal. But the largest breeding ground, in fact, happens to be the Gahir Matha Beach situated in Odisha, where huge number of olive lidded turtles are supposed to be nestling every year. So at once, say about 500 of the hatchlings enter the sea together. The only problem is the climate change, the plastic pollution and the increase in fishing could be a major factor why the population has been going down in the last few decades. Now let's remember that these little turtles, they actually make a journey from Australia to India that's over about 9,000 kilometers just to nestle in India. So this is a unique distinctive fact about these turtles. Another thing is that they today are a species that are declining and therefore talking about the Wildlife Protection Act 1972, they have been protected under Schedule 1. Talking about the International Union for Conservation of Nature, which also releases its red list. So these are the vulnerable species here. In fact, even when you talk about sites that prohibits people from doing poaching or hunting of endangered species of flora and fauna, these people, these little creatures are protected in the appendix one part of the sites. Now, another very interesting initiative associated with these creatures is Operation Olivia. Operation Olivia is associated with the protection of olive ridley turtles. Now, every year the Indian Coast Guard initiates the conservation effort and the effort to preserve, conserve and save them is known as Operation Olivia. It is just done in order to protect their breeding and nestling sites, particularly in the peak breeding season of November to December. The initiative had kicked off initially in the 1980s and it also, the Indian Coast Guard also tries to stop from any unlawful hunting, trading, poaching activities associated with this genre of turtles. And on that note, I would thank you and take your leave for the day. See you soon in another exciting quiz session.